Thank you for joining us. This is We Become Church. I am Alan. This is my wife, Tori. And at We Become, we believe God has a plan and a purpose for each person's life. And that if God allowed you to be born into this time on this planet, he has a unique plan and purpose for your life. So I'll open up in prayer and we'll get right into where we've been for two weeks now, two or three weeks, uh, Matthew chapter 7. Uh, Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for this time to be able to uh, share your word and to discuss your word and openly just share our faith. And there's, we just have the freedom to do that. And I'm, and I'm grateful for that and we're thankful for that. But I pray as we get into your Bible and study your scriptures and break down your word and look at the scriptures, I pray you would help us not to just be hearers of the word, but do as also. I pray you would help us to look at our own lives and see where we can apply the scriptures to our lives better and examine ourselves to see if we're lining up and where we're falling short and what we can do to, to better ourselves. But I thank you again for this opportunity and for this privilege of being able to do this. I pray you would bless this time and all who see this now or hear this now and in the future and we thank you and we love you in jesus name amen okay so um like to start with a recap and last week we did matthew 7 and we did verses 3 through 5 and my husband was sharing about um examining yourself when you are dealing with someone else addressing situations with gentleness, um, having the same grace with others that you would want them to have with you, and continuing to walk in Christ. Did you have anything else from the recap that you want to share? Um, just one thing. Uh, verse 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthew 7, verse 3, it says, Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but don't notice and acknowledge the log in your own eye and a thought a question is what should we do regarding our issues what should we do regarding our sin now, some people might not like the word sin they don't want to view it that way but a scripture I would like to read that this made me think of is Psalms uh, 32 verses 3 and 4 it says when I kept silent about my sin my body wasted away through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, your hand of displeasure was heavy upon me. My energy, vitality, strength was drained away as with the burning heat of the summer. So this might be a way, you know, sometimes people feel drained and tired. You ever stop and think, why? Is it just because you're just super busy? Or maybe it's because there's something in our life that isn't quite right and God's trying to get our attention and bring it to our focus to help us to deal with it. And then James 5, 6 <clears throat> says, Therefore, confess your sins one to another. And just to pause there, it's not to everyone. It's not confess your sins, get on Facebook and start typing, <laughs> Today, you know, March 5th, you know, 2019, I did such and such. That's not what he's talking about. This is confess your sins to one another, to people who you know love you, who you know you can trust, who you know when you share something with them that it's safe, and who aren't just going to bop you over the head and tell you shame on you, you know better, what's the matter with you, who are going to encourage you, pray for you, and help you get back on the right track. So the rest of that verse is, Therefore confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. That's the goal. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of the righteous can accomplish much. When put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. This is the amplified version, if you're wondering why it sounds a little different. But the end goal is, in result is when we stumble, when we have issues, when we have sin in our life, the end goal 
is to help someone be healed and restored. So keep that end goal in mind um, because it's going to be rough. <laughs> so just as a little preview before we really get into this, um, I know I was calling it like an eye exam and some people were wondering like, well, what is that about? Well, stay tuned. Um, but just as, um, I don't know, an intro or to, to preface this, um, be ready to be offended and to get your feelings hurt. <laughs> Possibly. Um, I'm not talking about you per se unless it applies to you and if so, I'm talking about you. Um, talking about me too. Talking about all of us. Um, today's message um, is called I Exam, but I kind of took it from the scriptures talking about having specks and logs and things in your eye. So, Matthew chapter 7, uh, starting with verse 3. I'm just going to kind of read through it real quick, and then we'll break it down from there. So, why do you worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye, then you'll be able to see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. So, um, I'd like to be a little bit more interactive and get your comments and feedback. So, if you want to comment along, you can, or if you just want to study at home at your own pace, some things to kind of take note of, if you're a note taker, uh, would be some questions that we have. So, first question, um, when he's asking, why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? So, we'll give you a minute to kind of think about that, um, think it over, kind of make your mental notes about it. But something that I kind of want to point out between the two um, people that's talking about here is what is the relationship between the two people? So kind of like, your little side notes, if you could write that down, what's the relationship? Um, what is the intention of each person? That's the second question. And what did Jesus have to say about the person with the speck and the person with the log? So those are just some questions um, to kind of start off with. And then as we go through it and read it, you know, try to answer those questions for yourself. Um, I'll be giving you, you know, my thoughts on it. Um, that I'm getting from the scriptures, but I want you to write down your thoughts too because it's not just all about listening, but it's about learning and we all learn different ways. So um, Where he starts off with why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? Again, we talked last week about what the scripture is saying what it's not saying and the way we can kind of figure that out is by examining it um, But also taking it in context. So first of all, let's start off by examining it it's not condemning the person for caring about his friend's eye. It's not saying, hey, until you're perfect, just mind your business. That's not what the scriptures say. Um, he wants them to help with his friend's eye, but he's saying, first address the log in your own eye. Now, is that my opinion or is that scripture? Let's go to verse number four. It says, how can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? So we're not backing this up with my opinion. I'm backing this up with scripture. As we talked about taking the thoughts um, in their context and taking them as complete thoughts and not just as paraphrases or parts of sentences because you're going to miss the point and the intention of it. So he's saying, Jesus, again, speaking, He's saying, why are you worried about the speck in your friend's eye? Not to say don't care about it, but why is that your focus when you have so much bigger things to deal with? Um, and he's saying this because how can you accurately assess what's going on when you are having trouble taking in what's true? So for most of us, our sight is the way that we see and perceive the world. And so... 
the way that we look at things is how we get our information. And just as it is in the natural, you know, if you know that there's um, a couch leg, you're not going to intentionally stumble and walk into it, you know. You're going to try to protect your piglets and not yeah. <laughs> smash them on the nightstand or whatever. But it's when you don't see those things, they're still there, but it's when you don't see them that you hurt yourself. And so in that same way that what we see, um, we take in to bring in information, and it helps us to understand what's going on and navigate situations and things, same way in the spiritual. The way that we see things, the way that we emotionally process things, the way that we perceive things affects the way that we navigate. It affects the course that we take, it affects our actions and our lack of actions. This is a lot. I'm not going to get through this this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, so when Jesus is saying this, he's saying to be mindful of those things that are in your own life that affect the way that you see and perceive other things, other people, other situations. So for starters, um, like I said, you know, the night stands there whether you see it or not. Certain things are true. I know there's a lot of difference with like opinions and stuff and it's like, oh, well, I feel this or I think that and that's okay. You can have your thoughts. Those are thoughts. You can have your opinions. Um, those are, you know, typically your feelings based, you know, off of your thoughts or your thoughts based off your feelings is an opinion. If you feel a certain way and you think a certain way about it, then that's going to create an opinion about it. Um, which is fine to have and we're all entitled to. But just because you have a thought about something or an opinion about something or you feel a certain way about something doesn't make it true. Doesn't. Um, things that are true are true. So they're factual. Um, and they're not just factual, but they're actual. So like if I have one rock and I pick up a second rock, I am now holding two rocks. Fact. I know it's a fact because if it was with my husband and he did the same thing, he would then have two rocks. If people 20 years from now did it, they would still have two rocks. If people 500 years before us did it, they would have two rocks. That's a fact. Not all facts are able to be as easily proven um, or demonstrated, but things that are factual are not changing, they're not fluctuating, they're not um, situationally dependent. They're not based on feelings, they're not based off emotions or opinions, they just are. Um, things like God's word. God's word is true. Um, we know this because the, the word of God, Jesus, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also said, no one can come to the Father except through me. So, some people, that's not what they feel. You know, well, I think that all roads lead to God. You can think that. That's okay. That's not fact. Because this, which is of a truth, is saying something contrary to that. So, um, it's kind of whose standard are you using to establish fact? And so, if you're using God's standard and the Bible and what Jesus is saying, then you're going to have to go by what he's saying and then either be accountable, well, you're accountable to the standard anyway, but you're either going to live up to it or you're going to not. But you're still going to be accountable, and it's still going to be true. Yeah. <clears throat> and the standard is there for everyone. And it doesn't matter what you believe, how mature or immature you are. God's standard is the standard. He doesn't grade on a scale. He doesn't change it depending upon the education or knowledge of the person. His, his, uh, you know, my father-in-law, her, her dad used to always say, at the foot of the cross, the ground is level. Meaning, Jesus doesn't grade on a curve. His word doesn't change for certain people groups, or for certain people, or for certain middle class, upper class. It's the same. His word is the same. So, with that in mind, um, that God's truth, which is truth, is like he's saying, it's the same for everyone, and that's one of the ways that we can know it's true. If it was like, okay, well, I think this, but I feel that, so then, you know, God's going to give me a pass. That's not how it works. So anyway, um, that's just a little backup. But when we have something that's true, like I said, you either live up to that standard 
or you don't, but it doesn't change the fact that facts are facts and truth is truth. So, um, going back to our eye exam, talking about the speck and the log. So when Jesus is saying, how can you say to your friend, let me help get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Um, like we were talking about, what's the relationship between the two people? These are two people who are friends. So just as my husband was saying before, you know, when it's saying confess your sins one to another, it's not saying tell all your business to everyone, but to those people that are within that um, circle of trust who are looking out for your best interest, um, who will hold you accountable. Uh, you need people in your life that hold you accountable. Someone at some point should be able to say something to you. Um, <laughs> and so today is like a little bit of kind of a, a harsh lesson because it's not to condemn anyone, but it's also to give truth. And so truth is, you know, how some people say like, oh, does this make me look bad? Or, you know, like, oh, well, it's not really them, it's me and stuff, whatever, or whatever the situation is. If someone loves you, they're going to tell you the truth. And so we're doing this not just because we want to share our faith, but because we care about you. Um, we love you. Uh, and we want you to know what's right. So I will let you know, that dress makes you look like sausage casing. <laughs> Um, or, you know, you may want to, you know, check your teeth, you know, or your breath. So that's what this lesson kind of is today. It's uncomfortable, but it's true, and it kind of needs to be said. Yeah, watching uh, American Idol, I think it was Randy, what was his name, Randy Carmichael? Um, I think he was one of the judges, but he was saying, sometimes you have people on the show, and you've seen the show, you've seen people who come on who really struggle with singing uh, they're just not as gifted as other people on the show and he says when you see those people make it through to this point and they get on national TV and audition and they don't really have a great singing voice he was like to him it says no one in their life loved them enough to tell them the truth mm. and it just stuck out to me that it's, it's nice to be encouraging and to be uplifting and to promote people to pursue their dreams. But he's like, no one in their life loved them enough to tell them, it's like, you can sing, but the competition you're going into, the people in that competition are really gifted and have really great voices. Although you can sing and it sounds great to us compared to them, I don't think this is something you should do or you might want to reconsider or... You, you have might... other great skills. Yeah. <laughs> How about you bake? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. So um, that also brings up another point, is that we all have blind spots. So the same way that our vision helps us perceive the world and take things in and have an understanding of things, um, those of us that are seeing people, those that aren't have to use their other senses, but... In that same way, even though those of us who can see and those of us who can see really well, we still have blind spots. You can still, anyone who's tried to drive and get on the highway, you know, has, I'm sure, at one point or another, you know, been like, whoa, where'd that car come from? It came from nowhere, you know? Cars don't just materialize on the highway. It came from somewhere. You just didn't see where they were coming from. Yeah. There's a reason they put that feature into vehicles. <laughs> so we all have blind spots in our lives, areas that we need to have addressed um and sometimes it's things that we ourselves can't see that's why it's so important to be in um have accountability but be a part of a church body now i'm not saying which church to go to and blah 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 and people and whatever and denominations not getting into all that but what i'm saying is if this word is so important to you that you're going to try to live by it you don't know everything there is to know about it and so you need other people who know about it, know about you, and can compare the two accurately and let you know where you are doing good, where you could use some improvement. And they need your input too. They need you to be honest with them in love, in gentleness, the way you would want to be approached, but in the same way um, to bring them into accountability and to be like, hey, that's not quite God's standard, you know, um, or maybe... You could <laughs> look at this scripture and like take it to heart or whatever, you know, 
Yeah, it's, it's not just an opportunity to start roasting each other. Yes. Just throwing up all, you know, <laughs> mentioning things in the worst, harshest, cruelest way you can possibly think of. Yeah. That's not what this is about. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, and that's not what church is about. Um, I know some churches, you know, do a better job of that than others. Um, but the whole intention and the goal is that, like it says in the scripture, that's why I said, like, one of the questions, what is the intention of each person? But if the intention of each person is to see and to see clearly, then even the person with a speck in their eye, it's much smaller than a log, but it's still occluding their vision. And so that speck still needs to be dealt with. And so it's not that Jesus is saying, hey, ignore that guy with the speck, you got a log. What he's saying is deal with your log so you can address the speck. He wants them both to have good and correct vision. So, um, again, like go over the questions, you know, look at the scriptures for yourself and don't just take my word for it, take God's word for it. Um, see what the scriptures are actually saying versus what they're, they're not saying. So this is why in verse five, Jesus himself says, hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you'll be able to see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Yeah. Um, if you're familiar with the Bible at all, you know that Jesus was harshest with the most religious of people. So people who, um, you know, were considered the sinners of that day or people who, you know, were not knowledgeable of God's word, he dealt with them in patience. He dealt with them in love. People who were the religious people who acted so high and mighty like they got it all together, he called them, you know, out to their face, you know? And so he calls them hypocrites and... Snakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he spoke with them in a harsher term because they had that broader base of knowledge. And so it's not that he didn't like them. His desire was for everyone to be saved, and that's why he died for all. But it's also kind of putting things in their true light. A lot of times, people in the world um, and in the church, they give Jesus a bad rap. Don't take other people's word for who God is. Know him for yourself. Get to know him. Read the Bible. Pray. Seek his face. He'll reveal himself to you. And you will find that he is a gentle and a loving savior with his arms wide open with a, a reckless abandon, you know, for you. So um, this word hypocrite is, don't have time again to kind of finish this the way I wanted to, but the word hypocrite um, comes from like an older Greek word. And again, I'm not good with the Greek, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But pretty much back in the day, they used to have these plays. And when they did the plays, they had like these giant faces. And the face had like a mouth hole. And so the actor wearing the face would like, you know, be doing whatever they're doing for the play. But what you saw was just a mask. But what was really being said is what was, you know, by the actor underneath the mask. And so that hypocrite term is kind of like that voice from within or that voice from underneath. And it's talking about underneath the mask. So um, we kind of use it in a more modern type, you know, basically putting on an appearance of something other than what you truly are or how you really feel. And so it's the same type of thing. Um, that's just the definition history of it. But so many times we try to deal with someone or we react a certain way to them and we might be dealing with them differently than how we're perceived as. But it's pretty much that voice from within that's kind of coming out. And so Jesus, knowing our true hearts and our true intention, this is why he was saying hypocrite, because he's like saying to address those things that you have in your life so that you can help this person. Because right now your intention, is it to really help this person? Or is it like my husband was saying to roast them or to shame them or, you know, to be angry because you have issues in your own life that you're refusing yeah. to deal with. Ultimately to make you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Or like my husband was saying, like, you know, that unaddressed sin, how it makes you feel like dried up and it can take your strength. Um, it can also make you angry. It can also make you bitter. It can make you hard hearted against other people. But it's not that other people are deserving of your wrath, but it's because you know you're in the place of the wrong. And instead of addressing your wrong, you're just going to look at how much more wrong everyone else is than you. That's not 
God's intention. <laughs> and this is why Jesus gives this warning. You doing that? So kind of being aware of those things in your own life, which we all have, again, we all have our blind spots. We all have, you know, spiritually, we don't all have 2020. It just, that's just the way we are. We're all in process. But as we try to become better and have the help of each other and of the Holy Spirit, uh, we can move towards improvement. And that's Jesus' goal. Get that log out so you can take the speck out. Yeah. Then everybody going to be seeing good. We all going to get Jesus blasted in us. But um, when you're saying these things and talking about taking the log out of your own eye, I'm not going to get into it today, but <laughs> so many times people, it's, it's, and it's not funny to see, but the way that they deal with people is almost in the exact opposite of how they want to be treated, but yet they're doing it in an attempt to be treated fairly. You know, um, to be honest, uh, everybody is prejudiced. Everybody. Maybe you aren't. I shouldn't say everybody. But most people are prejudiced. And when I say prejudice, and people think like, oh, that's because you're black or, you know, whatever color you are, you know. And it's not. Because prejudice is not the same as just being racist. Prejudice is a pre-justice. So how we start in the beginning of like, you know, being judgmental. So when you're prejudiced about something, you're passing judgment prior to an assessment. You're, it's pre-justice. You're making a judgment and you're passing a sentence based on an assumption. Someone cuts you off on the highway. That guy's an idiot. You never met that guy. You don't know his IQ. All you know is he cut you off on the highway. But now you're being prejudiced and thinking people who whip out there at, you know, <laughs> like nuts without looking, you know, are nuts and they're crazy and they're an idiot. Um, so we've made a pre-justice. We've passed sentence in judgment on someone without a thorough assessment. And people who, um, you know, have different looks to them. People just assume if someone has glasses, oh, they're smart. Or if someone has buck teeth, oh, they're dumb. Or if someone is heavy set, oh, they're lazy. You know, um, if someone doesn't smell great, you know, that they're dirty. Maybe they don't have housing. Maybe they, you know, can't afford other clothes. Maybe, you know, you, you don't know. Maybe they have a metabolism issue. You don't know what goes on in the lives of other people. But when you see them or you treat them a certain way based off of a judgment that's made off an assumption and not off evidence, you're being prejudiced. You're passing pre-justice um, prematurely prior to having any facts. And so um, a lot of times TV shows are very good at that. Uh, we've all seen TV shows where there's somebody who's the show, um, who's the brunt of all the jokes, who's the dumb person, who says stupid stuff, who acts a certain way, who's a bimbo or a floozy or whatever. And so everyone right away knows what the joke is because we all have that preconceived notion in our minds, um, whether it's by our own thoughts or by society kind of putting that influence on us. Oh, this person is this way. Um, a lot of animated characters, you can tell who's the bad guy because they have dark circles under their eyes. They have like a long nose. They're skinny and they're evil. <laughs> Hence, skinny people are evil, you know? <laughs> and I'm sure that's not what their intentions are, but it's a certain cast type. And because of that, they make you look at things in a certain way, whether it be true or not. That's why it's so important to kind of have a standard, not just to go along with what society says, what other people say, but what does God say? Because his word is the ultimate. And so being aware of those things that occlude our vision, that get in the way of seeing correctly, because how we see is how we perceive and how we perceive is how we judge. And so to make those righteous judgments, to speak that truth in love, so we can help our friend get the speck out of their eye. Let's examine ourselves and get the logs out of our eyes and to be honest with ourselves and be like, yeah, you know what? I, I do do that, or I do think this way, or I do you know, feel this way about this situation. And not because 
it's justified, but because I just do, or because my family raised me this way, or whatever the reason is. But to stop and honestly assess yourself and where you're at prior to passing judgment on other people. Yeah, and then <clears throat> once you realize, like one of the things I we tell our kids is it's okay to have a problem because people have problems, people have issues, you know, people, life is just full of stuff. But it's not okay to be aware that you do have a problem and do nothing about it. So if you have a problem, once you are aware, take ownership of it, take responsibility for it, and then work towards improving and getting that problem or that situation to a healthy place. Just do the best you can and with God's help, He'll help you to improve things and to get things to a good, healthy place. Because that's like in James five five, James chapter 5, verse 16, the goal is to be healed and restored. So that's the goal. And with God's help, he will help us get there. Because it says, when put into action and made effective by God. So he'll help us. He desires for us to, to be healthy, to be healthy people. Not just, you know, in what we take in as far as food and different things, but in our, in our minds, in our, our eyes, like seeing situations and assessing things. He wants us to have good, healthy eyesight, to have a good, healthy vision, to be able to see things clearly without things obstructing our vision. So, and if we just ignore things, nothing will improve and nothing will change. But if we acknowledge things, yes, it might be hard to accept certain things and, oh, we've been this way for so long. Okay, okay, let's deal with it. Let's process it. Let's take the time we need to to kind of get over that feeling of guilt or shame and understand that God wants us to, to deal with whatever that problem or issue is and to get to a healthy place. You can finish. You can wrap this up. Uh, so that's that's it for this week. So we'll continue on uh, more next week. Um, I pray this has been beneficial to those who uh, are watching this or hearing this or will hear it in the future. Um, oh, can I ask a question too? Sure. All right. So for next week, um, those who have been playing along at home as far as like reading things and asking questions, look at verse 6. Because that's probably where we'll be going. We'll see. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. But um, kind of start to look at verse 6. Um, because it, it looks difficult on the surface. But from what we've read, try to find out who are the swine. Or, you know, the pigs. What are the pearls? And, um, yeah, we'll talk more about that when we get there. But try to, like, do some brainstorming yeah we want this to be more interactive so we're thinking of a way to make an online bible study more interactive so if anyone has any ideas or knows of something some software an app or something we're open to good suggestions um all right uh, father god thank you for this day thank you for this time in your word and i pray i pray this has been beneficial to people and I pray you would help again, help us to apply your word to our lives. Help us to read your word for ourselves so we can see what it is saying to us and what your plan and purpose is for each one of us. But help us to start to seek you and start to look at our lives and examine ourselves and see those areas and issues in our lives that might be hindering us from walking in and being the people that you have called us to be. Help us to address and to deal with those areas that could be hindering us from becoming and being the people who you would have us to be, or could be hindering us from fully and truly being a blessing and being a help to people. I pray you would help us to be mindful of those areas and see those areas and not to just feel guilt and shame, but to feel a desire to move past that, to deal with them and put those issues behind us and to move forward in what you would have us to be. And we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen.